Hallelujah. What a joy to be back this wonderful Wednesday evening. Glory World family, I celebrate every one of you and all our viewers around the world. Welcome to a wonderful time in God's presence. We've been dealing with uh, the subject of divine covering, divine protection, divine preservation all through the month of May. Today, I'll be dealing with the subject preserved by the force of faith. Preserved by the force of faith. And my text is from Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 1 to 2, 6 to 7, 31 to 35. Verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Verse 7 now says that by faith Noah being warned of God, of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house. So faith saved his house. By which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verse 31 says, By faith the hallowed Rahab perished not with them that believe not. So faith preserved Rehab from death and destruction when his ent her entire lineage and family, I mean, and, and country was wasted. When she received the spies with peace, 32, and what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, torn to flight, the armies of the aliens. And verse 35, women receiving their dead, raised to life again by the force of faith. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Preserved by the force of faith. One of the covenant weapons that defends, protects, and preserves the believer against untimely death is the virtue of faith. Faith is your defense and protective weapon against satanic attacks, satanic oppression, satanic manipulation, and satanic genocide. Now, what is faith? Number one, faith is a complete belief and persuasion in God and in His Word. A complete belief and persuasion in God and in his word, that is in his existence, and in his power, and in the certainty of his word. Number two, we find that in Hebrews 11 verse 6, two, absolute trust in the promises of God concerning your life and destiny. What has God spoken about your life? Absolute trust in that promise of God for your life is faith. Believing that what God says will come to pass no matter what the devil does. Romans 4 verse 20. What is faith? Number three, total trust in the ability and capacity of God to defend, keep, protect, and preserve you from all forms of satanic vices or human plots and conspiracy. Total trust in the ability and capacity of God to defend, keep, protect, and preserve you from all forms of satanic vices or human plots and conspiracy. So it doesn't matter who is conspiring against you, who is planning to waste you. If you can trust God and his capacity to keep you, he will keep you. 
in spite of who is against you. That's what David meant in Psalm 23 verse 4 when he says, Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I'll fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. I can't be afraid when you are walking side by side with me. And in Psalm 27 verse 1 to 3, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2 says, When the wicked even my enemies and my foes came up upon me to eat of my flesh. They stumble and fall. Verse 3 says, Even though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Why am I confident? I know whom I believed. There's someone stronger than my storm right behind me or right beside me. Number four, what is faith? The full assurance and conviction that God is able to save you from harm and danger. All forms of harms and danger. The full assurance and conviction that God is able to save you from all forms of harm and danger. That's what Paul said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I am persuaded. I am sure that he is able to keep. Now, faith is one of the greatest forces of the kingdom of God. Nobody succeeds in this kingdom without the instrumentality of faith. If you don't master faith, you will master fear. Faith is your strongest point as a child of God if you must survive and succeed against the devil. In Habakkuk 2 verse one, 4, we hear that the just shall live by faith. So the just shall live by faith. You can't live in this kingdom in the absence of faith. When faith is missing, your life is lost in this kingdom. We live by faith. Matthew 9.22 Our faith makes us whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith. So faith is what heals us when we are sick. Restores us when we fall. Recovers us when we fail. Faith makes us complete and whole in the Lord. In verse 29 of Matthew 19, it is always unto us according to our faith. So it is our faith that delivers all of our expectations from the Lord. It will be to me according to my faith. It will be to you according to your faith. So when you have no faith, nothing happens to you. You can't get answers from God. You can't get blessings from God. You can't receive nothing good from life. Everything in life happens to us according to our faith. John 11 and verse 40, we can never see God's glory in the absence of faith. Jesus said unto her, Said not I, the I unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? So it is believing that helps us connect or see the revelation of the glory of God. When faith is missing, you are glory starved and bankrupt of glory. We believe to see the glory of God. Without the belief, the glory can never be ours. And in Romans 5 verse 2, I'm just trying to show you that faith is a major force, a major factor in the kingdom of God. You can't truly be a successful Christian without the force of faith. In fact, the Christian life experience is referred to as the faith. So, faith is what we do when we become children of God. In Romans 5 verse 2, we hear that faith is our only access into grace. The grace of God can only be accessed by us through the instrument of faith. So, grace can be available, but you are not obtainable. 
You obtain it, you assess it by application of faith. Faith is your most important weapon as a child of God. It's a force you can't ignore. Second Corinthians 1.24 We can only stand in the kingdom of God by faith. Without faith we stumble. Without faith we fail. Without faith we fall. We are kept and upheld in the kingdom of God by faith. And in 1 John 5 and verse 4, faith is the sponsor for every believer's victory in life. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But he said first that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Why? There is an instrument that helps us overcome the world, even our faith. Ephesians, I'm just listening to you to let you know that faith is an indispensable virtue. You can't do without faith in the kingdom of God. Wake up. Wake up. Go for more of faith. Grow your faith. Feed your faith. Without it, you sink. Ephesians 2 verse 8, all men are saved through faith. Our salvation came to us through faith. For by grace are we saved through through the passageway through which grace saves us is the way of faith. Through faith. It is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Listen, the man should boast. So faith brings us to salvation. And without it, we are lost and lost forever. 1 Timothy 1 verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made what? Shipwreck. The meaning of that is the bankruptcy of faith leads, leads to the shipwreck of destiny. Or leads to destiny shipwreck. You can't arrive destiny successfully when faith is lost. Some having put away faith made a shipwreck of their, faith, of their destiny. Your future is lost. Destiny lost. Purpose lost. Vision wasted. Every time you, are, you fall from faith, you lose grace. You lose destination. You lose your purpose. Faith is a force you can't afford to joke with. Go back now and anchor your faith, your spirituality on your own faith. 1 Timothy 2, I mean 5.12 To cast away your faith is to open the door to damnation. Anyone who loses faith is damned for life. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Anyone who throws away his faith sinks for life. This is destroyed. Has no chance of survival. Friends, we find that again in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 10. Where the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil, which some having coveted after, and they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many. So when faith is missing, the future is completely destroyed. Hebrews 4, verse 2, the absence of faith is the absence of a profit and spiritual results. Unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that they heard it. So when you hear the word and refuse to mix it with faith or believe the word, you don't get the result of the word, the profit of the word, the benefit of the word. So the benefit of the word is delivered to you on the premise of faith, on the platform of faith. If not, you just be a church goer, going and coming and going and coming and nothing is happening. You are the one that is making the unbelievers wonder, why do you go to church every time? The reason because there is no faith to draw from God's resources for your life. You make profit in the faith by the force of faith. Amen? So faith is our proof producers. Produces faith, you know, I mean, result in us. Produces proof. You have something to show to your neighbor that you are serving a living God by the force of faith. And Hebrews 6 verse 12, faith is the only access to our spiritual inheritance in Christ. 
follow the followers of them who through faith and patience obtain or inherit the promise. So you can only inherit every promise of scripture to you and for you through the force of faith. Everyone who got anything from God in the past, presently and in the future will ever get it by the force of faith. So follow them by faith and also inherit the promise. Now take note of this, every general in God's kingdom is kept and preserved by the force of faith. Kept, preserved by the force of faith. When you have the time, sit back again and read Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. By faith, Abel. By faith, Noah. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. By faith, Samuel. By faith, everyone, you are nothing in this kingdom without faith. You have nothing in this kingdom without faith. You become nothing in this kingdom without the force of faith. So faith is the only acceptable currency in God's kingdom. You do transaction in the kingdom by the currency of faith. Pound sterling is the currency of England. Dollars. Is the currency of America. Naira is the currency of Nigeria. Ran is the currency of South Africa. You can't buy or sell without those currencies in those countries. The same way in the kingdom of God, you buy and sell and exchange values through the force of faith. That's the currency that obtains in this kingdom. Without it, you are bankrupt. You are dead. You are lost for life. Romans 14 23 says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you do anything in this kingdom without the platform of faith, operation of faith, the virtue of faith, that thing is sinful. The kingdom operates on faith. Any other transaction is illegal. No one has a place in God's hero's list in the absence of faith. In God's kingdom, faith failure is worse than heart failure. The meaning of that is, it's better you have suffered from heart failure than suffer from faith failure. Because if your heart fails, your faith can jack back your heart. But if your faith fails, everything fails with it. Now, faith is in measures. There are levels of faith. There are dimensions of faith. So we grow into different levels of faith. You can start from no faith and rise up to the highest level of faith. Let me list the several types of faith. And I begin with one that you never probably, probably believe would have been faith. The first kind of faith or type of faith is called fear. Nobody ever told you that, isn't it? But the Lord told me that fear is faith. The only difference between fear and our kind of faith is that fear is faith in the negative. When you, if you study mathematics, there's something called number line. In number line, there is a place where zero starts. To the right of zero is positive numbers. To the left of zero is negative numbers. Faith is the negative number of, fear is the negative number of faith. Why faith is the positive number of faith? What I mean by that is, when you are afraid, you are only having faith in the ability of the devil. You believe more in his capacity. You believe more in his potency. You believe more in his ability to destroy, to kill you, so you shake. But when you switch and start having faith in the ability of God, that's where the positive dimension begins to come. So the first level of faith is called fear, negative faith. Faith in cap the capacity of Satan. Mark 4, 40. You can find it there. Fear focuses on the ability of Satan to deliver results. Faith focuses on the ability of God to deliver results. The ability of Satan to deliver results gives you negative results. The ability of God to deliver results gives you positive results. So, faith that exalts and magnifies the devil is called fear. Number two is no faith. There's a dimension called no faith at all. 
When you come from the negative, you get to a place of zero. No faith level is called zero faith level. Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. They are a people of no faith. Children in whom is no faith. Number three, little faith. There are people that have little faith. Little faith is just a little addition to the zero dimension of faith. Matthew 6, 30, little faith. Matthew 8, 26, you find little faith there. And in number four is what I call weak faith. Romans 4, 19, being not weak in faith. Being not weak in faith. Romans 14, 1. Somebody can have weak faith. Him that is weak in faith, receive ye. So somebody can have weak faith. That is faith that is not even up to the half of a hundred percent of faith. Weak. Little faith, then a little above little faith is weak faith. And then there's normal faith or ordinary faith. That is faith at its, its average. If you score 50%, that's average of 100%. That's normal. You are a new, they call you an average student. Yeah. So you can be on that level of faith where you're just 50%. Neither here nor there, but you just have faith. So when God says faith, just faith, just faith. That's normal thing called faith, not higher dimension, but just the stable average dimension of faith. You find that in Mark 11:22. To 23, when he said, have faith in God. Nothing added to that faith. Have faith in God. For if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in thy heart, but shall believe. So that's the normal faith. That normal faith can move mountains for you. Then number six is strong faith. After the normal faith, you can start going stronger towards perfection in faith. Strong faith. Romans 4 verse 20. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. That's the kind of faith Abraham had. Strong faith. Giving glory to God in spite of his condition. Number seven is called great faith. Apart from strong faith, you have great faith. Great faith is a dimension called excellence in faith. Great faith. Excellence in faith. Matthew 15, 28. Great faith. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. In verse, eight of, uh, in verse 10 of chapter 8 of Matthew, he said, I've never seen such great faith in Israel. I've not found such great faith in Israel. That was the faith of the centurion. Number 8 is called abundant faith. 1 Timothy 1, 14. And number nine is exceeding abundant faith. Why do we have abundant faith? Because you can't get to exceeding abundant until you're going to abundance. The same scripture applies. You get to abundance to exceed abundance. So there's abundance of faith. Then there is exceeding. Now, exceeding abundant faith is when faith overflows. On, now, it becomes contagious to those around you. Nobody hands around you and not feel your faith and catch your faith. Connect your faith. It is a realm where faith can be imparted to other people. Exceeding, abundant faith. Now, how does faith preserve us? How does faith preserve us? Number one, faith pleases God and brings God to our aid. Every time you demonstrate faith or manifest faith, you please God. That alone brings God to your aid. Brings God to your help. A son that pleases the father has the backup, the support, the supply of the father any day, any time. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then 1 John 5 verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it brings God to our aid to support us and give us victory in all that we do. Number two, faith is our spiritual shield. It shields us from satanic attacks and affliction. It's like an umbrella 
like a defensive weapon. What we do with shield when we fight a battle, that's what happens when we apply our faith. It protects, it shields, it covers us. Ephesians 6, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, taking every virtue that God has given to the believer has a function. Faith acts as a shield. It shields us. Even in this wicked season of coronavirus, faith can shield you. Faith can cover you. Faith can protect you. Faith can defend you. Faith can preserve you. It shields you from death, from calamity, from catastrophe, from attacks, from manipulation, from harm, from danger. Faith is a shield. In Psalm 125, verse 1 to 2, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide for how long? Forever. Verse 2 says, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from this time, even forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. God, by faith, by our trust, becomes a defense around us. Faith shields. Faith protects. Number three, faith imparts life to those who operate it. Everyone who operates in the realm of faith has life imparted to them. Hebrews 10, 38 and 39. Come on, I love this. Now the just shall live by faith. So every time I exhibit faith, every time I exercise faith, every time I manifest faith, I live by my faith. It imparts life. And God says he has no pleasure in anyone that has no faith. Now look at verse 39. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So believing saves the soul. Believing protects the soul. Believing heals the soul. Believing preserves the soul. The more we believe, the more saved we are. Glory to God in the eyes. Hallelujah. Number four, how does faith protect or preserve us? Faith eliminates our fears and fuels and sustains our hope. It eliminates our fears, fuels and sustains our hope. Proverbs 10 verse 24, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. Now when fear comes, it kills. 1 John 4, 18 says, fear has torment. It torments you to death. Many people are dying in this corona season, not because of the plague, but because of the fear of the plague. Many have died because of the fear of HIV, not the HIV itself. Hypertension is killing more people than anything else. What causes stroke? What causes paralysis? Too much anxiety, too much worries. Too much analysis always leads to paralysis. Leave the things in the hand of God and trust Him to take care of it. And you live long. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Hebrews 11, 27. Hear what the Bible says of Moses. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. So lack of faith eliminated his fear of the wrath of the king. And protected him and saved an entire nation for Jesus by faith. Amen. There's this story I've shared around, I mean, all these years I've been preaching the gospel. Very wonderful story that will bless you. A couple in America got married and they were just enjoying the freshness of their union. Not too long into the marriage, they had an accident that incapacitated the wife. Placed her on a wheelchair. Few months after marriage. Everything turned upside down. The joy they expected to enjoy all their lives ended suddenly. And the man kept helping the lady. Until one day they heard that a man of God that they all respected was coming to a city near their city in America. The name of the man is R.W. Chamba. And respect who has influenced my life in many ways. So they gathered the money that they had. And paid for a hotel near the event of the, the meeting. And then 
paid for their flight ticket and moved into the city waiting for the meeting to begin. It was a five-day meeting and Chamba was to preach five days in a large tent. So every day of the events, the man would roll his wife to the front line on wheelchair and sit right behind her, waiting for the stirring of the water. The very first day Chamba came and began to minister. The power of God was everywhere, healings everywhere. Blind eyes opening, deaf ears hearing, the dumb speaking, cripples were walking, wheelchairs empty. Many miracles happening, but the lady did not get healed. The second night, the same thing happened. The third night, the same thing happened. The fourth night, the same. But these people believed that God was going to heal the woman. The woman said, if I can just be in that meeting, I know that God will heal me through chamber. Then the final day of the crusade came. And then she was rolled back to the front. She said, I'm going to be healed no matter what today. So she sat there, and that last day, there was a lot of miracles happening everywhere. It was beyond human comprehension. But ultimately, the meeting ended, and they shared the grace, but the woman was not healed. As soon as they shared the grace, the man knew the fate of the woman, and didn't know how to handle her now. The woman turned and looked at the husband, tears streaming down her face, and the husband too was weeping. Suddenly, she said to the, woman, the, the husband, the crusade is not over. Shambak is still preaching and I am walking. The husband became afraid and was afraid and was so scared that the worst has happened. Thought the wife was losing her mind. But the woman had faith to say, I came to be healed and I refused to be denied. So they rolled her to the hotel that night waiting for the next available flight to go back to the city the next day. But all through the night, she was saying the same thing. The crusade is not over. Champak is still preaching. And I am walking. What faith? What faith is this? The next day, they flew back to the city. And for the next seven days, she said the same thing every day, morning, noon, and night. The crusade is not over. Champak is still preaching. And I am walking. And then, one of those nights, Maybe about the seventh night. I'm not too sure. But one of those nights. She said that to the husband. Before now, the husband had brought a psychiatrist to test her to find out if she was okay. They said to her, him, she's very good. She's fine. There's something she's trying to express. So she went to bed that night and in her sleep, she found herself in that same meeting that she returned from where Chamba was ministering. And she noticed that Shamba came back on stage and said, there's a woman who was supposed to be healed who is not healed. Where is she? And walked down to where she was sitting in the dream and held her up from the wheelchair. She stood up in the dream, began to leap for joy and was jumping. While she's jumping in the dream, she was moving from the bed in her sleep. Suddenly she fell off the bed and her feet landed on the ground. Damn, her eyes wide open. She saw she could walk. From the dream, it manifests in the physical. She felt like screaming and shouting. She said, no, my husband has been making breakfast for me all these months. I've been on the wheelchair. Let me give me a surprise. So it was early in the morning. She walked to the kitchen and started preparing breakfast. The husband started hearing noise in the kitchen and got up slowly, thinking it was an arm rubber or a thief. Went slowly and found the wife in the kitchen on her feet cooking. The crusade is not over. Chambak is still preaching. And I am walking. I came to let you know that no matter what you're going through right now, faith can bring you out of it. Faith can be the bridge between where you are and where you hope to be. Faith can solve your problem. Faith can heal your body. Faith can bring you out of debt. Faith can change your story. Faith is your most important Virtue. Now, how can I develop faith for my soul preservation, destiny preservation? How to pre develop faith? Number one, source for faith in the word of God. Source for faith in the word of God. Source for faith in the word of God. Romans 
10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing, the more of the word you hear, the more of the word you study, the more of the word you open yourself up to, the more of faith you draw. Number two, encounter and maintain fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Faith comes from the Spirit. Second Corinthians 4.13 says, calls him the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of faith. So he's the one who imparts faith. Knowing him, relating with him increases your faith. Galatians 5.22 says that faith is the fruit of the spirit. So the spirit bears the fruit called faith. When you receive the Holy Spirit and walk with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of faith is born in your life and flows out of your life. And in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 9, we hear that faith is a gift of the Spirit. So the Holy Ghost gives faith to those who relate with Him, who fellowship with Him. Then number three, maintain a prophetic connection with great men of faith for constant impartation of the Spirit of faith. Maintain a prophetic connection with great men of faith for constant impartation of the spirit of faith. Now, a man operating in the realm of faith has the power and grace to impart faith to your spirit. There's someone you listen to and your chicken heart will be given exchange for a lion heart. Exchange for a lion heart. There's someone you listen to, your vegetable heart will become an miracle heart. There's someone you connect with and fear dies. For faith to be born in your spirit. Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. For somebody who had wisdom laid hands on him. So wisdom is a transferable vice. I mean virtue. And faith is also a transferable virtue. It can be imparted on you. By someone who is higher and greater than you. In that dimension. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 13 to 15. We see how that the mantle of Elijah fell and Elisha took it. And the people said of a truth, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. So a man has conquered the realm you're trying to arrive. Look up to that man, connect him by his books, by his tapes, by going to fellowship in his church under him, listening to his voice, connecting him by seed. Many ways you can get a man's spirit to rub off on you. When you do that, faith is released into your spirit. Praise God. What a word from God. What a moment. Faith is a preserver of destiny. Now, you can't enjoy faith for destiny preservation without a personal relationship with Jesus. You must become a child of God. There's no, no two way about it. Jesus has got to be your Lord and your Savior. And that's the key to a life of faith. Let's pray together. You want Jesus to forgive your sins. Come into your life. Change your story and make you new. Let's do it now. Right where you are. It will happen like a miracle. And your life will just change forever. Say with me, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. I open up my heart today confess my sins and I receive you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, please come into my life. Save my soul. Give me the power to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful. That's the greatest miracle that can ever happen to anybody anywhere in the world. That the Lord is in your life as your Lord and your Savior. Now, you need to keep that life, the new life in Christ, burning and growing. When a child is born, we don't dump the child in the gutter or dump the child in the bush. The child will die. You plant the child in a family. Every child is born into a family. A child without a family will soon die. So, find yourself a Bible-believing church. Go there and tell them I sent you. 
Serve God there. Connect the pastor. Live with them and serve God there. Pray every day as a child of God and then read your Bible every day. The Bible is the food for the spirit man. It helps this newborn baby in the Lord to grow like the breast milk of the mother. Please study the Bible every day and your faith will be standing on the word of God. The Lord bless you. I invite you, if you're living around Aket, join us in Glory Wall at Glory Wall International Gospel Center. 65 Ecot Dodoma Estate Road is where we worship God every Sunday. After this lockdown, we'll soon be up there again. Three power pack services on Sunday morning, 7 a.m., 8.45, and 10.30 a.m. respectively. And every Wednesday, we have a great time in God's house at 5 p.m. Communion through teaching service. Awesome time awaits you. God bless you. Can I pray now for everyone hearing the sound of my voice around the world or viewing me around the world. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the force of faith. You gave us this virtue so we can assess your goodness, your kindness, your blessing, your favor. Therefore, Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the force of faith, I decree now every obstacle, every limitation, every hindrance hindering the people of God from assessing your covenant, assessing your blessing, assessing your favor. I command them to be broken down in the name of Jesus by the force of faith. I release healing to your body. I release miracle. Wherever you are, believing God for any kind of change, receive now in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance. I speak encounter. I speak favor. I speak breakthrough. I speak open doors in the name of Jesus. I decree now that the hand of God is upon your life for change. I release a blessing upon your job, upon your business, upon your career. And by the force of faith, I protect and defend you from every attack of coronavirus and any other plague around the world. I rebuke hepatitis. I rebuke diabetes. I rebuke hypertension. I rebuke cancer. Any disease ravaging your body, I cause it now in the name of Jesus. And I convey the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow upon your life and upon the works of your head. I bless your marriage. I bless your home. I bless your mentality. I bless your career. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice today, let it be clear that a prophet has released a blessing upon you. Be blessed. And I command a turn around in your life. Every aspect of your life is changing for the best. Now, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Wow. Wonderful, wonderful. Every time we pray like this, miracles happen. You can reach us on the number that we scroll on your skin. Reach us, share your testimonies. Let us know you gave your life to Christ today so we can keep praying for you and give your testimonies on your behalf so that God can be glorified. We are online every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Facebook, on YouTube. We are also on online every Sunday at 9 a.m. Join us every Wednesday, 6 p.m., every Sunday, 9 a.m. Wonderful time in the presence of God. Don't forget that we're also on radio, Heritage Radio 104.9 FM, every Sunday at 12 noon and every Wednesday at 7.30. Join us in any of our online services, YouTube or Facebook. The Lord bless you. Um, we have a special prayer session we have every Friday, and I'm inviting you to join us on Telegram. We pray every Friday by 6 p.m., two hours of deep intercession. Things are changing in this nation as the people of God are praying. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that he will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land. God is about healing Nigeria, healing Africa, healing the world. Join us together on Friday, 6 p.m. on Telegram as we pray. We'll be sending in prayer topics and you pray with us. You answer, amen. You give your own. I mean, we pray together. And when we join faith together, miracles happen. The Lord bless you mightily. I love you. Keep your spirit alive. Stay tuned. I'm trusting God that in the next few weeks, we are back in church serving God together. But for now, enjoy the best of this season. 
the Lord bless you till I come your way again next time don't you ever forget God loves you and so do I Shalom Thank you.